I'm going to try it this way. Uh, if it doesn't work, I, some people in the back are going to give me the high sign that you can't hear me. You can't hear me already. All right, well, so much for that. Um, it is indeed an, an honor to be here. And, and I notice, uh, I think I'm, I'm, I'm a member of the family now. I'm assuming this is Sam Vandal. Uh, um, I think pretty soon I'll be able to have Bennett. Uh, so I've um, been working on the Bennett family. I want to talk, since we were talking about source material, I want to talk a little bit about the, the way I went at working on this project. Um, there is a wealth of material that your families have donated to the library here, and, and I imagine, I certainly hope, that many of you have read the oral histories that were posted on, uh, there are a number of websites and Facebook pages I've been following over the last few months. Um, and there, there are some, some really interesting oral histories. Um, historical memory is a fascinating thing. Um, and uh, one of the ones that I most highly recommend is um, Humboldt, uh, the son of Tom and Sally, his recollections. A lot of what he has to say, um, he was not alive when the events happened. And so somehow he acquired um, the knowledge of these events. Um, and, and as I approached the, I, I looked at all the oral histories as I was doing research, and I approached them with a fair amount of skepticism um, and, and tried to go um, when I wrote the book with things that I co could corroborate from other sources. So um, not to say that that the, that the or information in the oral history is not accurate, but in some cases um, I wasn't really able um, to, to establish that. It, I'm going to give you a couple of examples of that. In other cases it was amazingly accurate. Um, I, I could um, recreate uh, recollections that were passed down through oral history exactly in uh, newspaper sources and various other things you could confirm them, but a couple of key events um, in the life of Thomas Cassad um, that Humboldt talks about that that I'm questioned. Um, the first is the I'll, I'll briefly go through the the entire story. Uh, I imagine every single one of you has read the book, but it won't be uh, right at the tip of your fingers, and so I'm going to go through the history really quickly. Uh, in a minute, he's, just, he's been interviewed by uh, Donald Bennett, and he says, Uncle Hum, can you tell me about the story of what happened with Tom in, in Kansas? And he basically says, I, I can tell you the facts. I don't like the facts, but I can tell you the facts. And the fact is, he just got drunk and killed a guy. And Donald says, I, I thought there was something to do with land, some controversy over land. Said no. Said no. He just got drunk and shot him, and killed him. <laughs> That's not what happened. That is how the memory that was passed to Humboldt. He was not alive when it happened. He was born after the event. Um, there was a a land issue, um, and in those days, both in Kansas and in New Mexico. It was very common to solve your differences with a horse race, a dog fight, or a gun fight. And Tom Cassette certainly killed that guy and it changed his life. The other incident has to do with um, whether or not there was cash money brought from California or whether it was a, a bank failure. And it, uh, um, and, and if you'll read the book, you'll see that I went with the story of the little chest of gold. Don't really know whether that's true or not. Humboldt said it was not true, that there was no cash. It's a better story. Um, so uh, when you read it, you can read the oral history interview and you can read what I wrote. Now, what I want to do for you very quickly, um, uh, in the years uh, after the book was published, um, I've always kept my eyes open for uh, Cassad material and Cassad stories. 
Um, and um, Jerry Grimm asked me some time ago if I would consider doing uh, a Bennett history. And I thought, hmm, here's a cottage industry. I'll do one <laughs> for each family. Um, and um, so a lot of the, of the focus of the additional cassette research uh, came from some ideas that I got in, in starting to do Bennett research. Now this is a long and narrow room, um, and um, I, there's probably no way in the world that those of you in the back, I see some head shaking, you can't possibly see this. I'll try to describe some of this material, um, and then maybe uh, we can uh, do this again sometime uh, in a different venue. But this is called the Peregrinations of Thomas Cassad, and this is, I'm often asked, uh, I'm known as a Spanish colonial historian, but people will see that I've written a book about pioneering Mesilla Valley, and they'll ask me to tell this story, and I've sort of developed this way of telling the story. I'm sure you know that your family originates um, in uh, Huguenot country in, in France and in, in Belgium in that area. Um, with a different spelling, and one of the fascinating things about what I call Cassad family uh, is that I was doing research, I found so many different spellings for the names, um, and they all in fact seem to be the same family. Um, when I was in Ohio doing research, I was asked about, cause, no, we never, don't know any Cassads, we've got a Cozad family here. Um, anyway, um, Thomas Cassad, uh, born in Greene County, Ohio, 1816. Hmm, 200 years. Think about that, right? Um, the, the family moves to Illinois, and, and a lot of the story of, of the Cassad family is an Illinois story, a prairie story. Um, when I looked at the material here to evaluate whether or not it would be even possible to write a history of this family, what I concluded would, as rich as the collection is, I couldn't write a history of this family if all I did was use the material here. I had to go where the family had lived. And so I went to Illinois and to Iowa and to Kansas, to Missouri, to California, um, in order to retrace the steps, to look at the sources in that area. But it, it is very much um, an Illinois story. Um, the Cassettes founded the town of Summerfield, Illinois. How many of you have visited Summerfield, Illinois? Don't everybody raise your hand at once. <laughs> well, don't worry because we're going to go there in just a few minutes. Okay, I'm going to take you to Summerfield. Um, it's a classic Western story. The, the, the family settles in, in first in New Jersey, then to Ohio, um, then uh, to Missouri, to Kansas. Kansas is where the, the seminal event in the life of Thomas Cassad happens when he kills a man. Um, but prior to that, when, when he was living in Illinois, um, he had tried his hand in the gold fields in California um, and ended up in, in Oregon. Um, we know that he went south, he crossed the Isthmus of Panama, sailed up um, the coast um, after an unsuccessful attempt uh, as a gold miner, he crossed the country. Um, back overland. Um, so already a lot of adventures. And after he had the after he killed the man in um, in Kansas, the family fled um, on the way to New York. And in a place called Iliopolis, um, that's where Humboldt was born. And so as a babe in arms, that they fled, the family flees to New York, flee their the, the law is after them, um, and they flee to New York. They, they sail from New York, again cross the Isthmus of Panama, um, and go back to California. Now, 
they, they crossed Panama um, at a time when Mark Twain had also uh, crossed it and he wrote about that so we have some wonderful descriptions of what that journey would have been like. There was no Panama Canal. Uh, this was crossing the isthmus uh, uh, on a train, a rickety old train. They went to California, um, they arrive in San Francisco, and they, they go south to Santa Ana, um, buy property there. Um, uh, Tom Cassad builds a beautiful home, uh, the first two-story brick home in California. Um, and this is just one of many pioneer endeavors that he's involved in. Um, he is very much interested in agricultural innovation. Um, and um, everything seems to be going fine. The property is developing, it's becoming very prosperous. They have so much land, they decide to sell a little bit of land to a neighbor. And Sally becomes concerned that Tom and the neighbor are not getting along. And she's afraid there's going to be a repetition of what happened in Kansas. And so they take off back to the east, presumably headed for Fort Worth, either with a little chest of gold or without a little chest of gold. They arrive in Mesilla. They take their stock south of Mesilla so that it can pasture. And all but a couple of animals are stolen. They find lodging with fellow Masons in Mesilla who persuade them to stay. And in a very short period of time, um, Tom Cassad becomes one of the most successful agriculturalists um, in the Mesilla Valley. Um, that is the, the nut, that's the basic story in a nutshell. And um, now I'm going to take you on a trip. Um, we're going to go first to uh, Summerfield. <laughs>